Tribes in Native American cultures believed that health was an expression of the spirit, mind, and body. If anything was off, illness and harm would often come their way, and only when harmony was achieved could health be restored. Tribes not only used herbs, roots, and plants to heal all sorts of ailments, but also believed in certain ceremonies and rituals to cure the ill. The tribe would often come together to help the sick through ceremonies, dances, prayer, and chanting. For this project, I will be exploring the tradition of vocal healing used by the Native American tribes. In tribes such as the Sioux and Navajo, they would use a medicine wheel, a sacred hoop, and hold ceremonies where they would sing and dance for days if they believed the group as a whole needed balance and harmony. When individuals were sick, designated healers would also sing, dance, chant, and use instruments such as drums as part of the healing process. Some healers would use song when they were called on to help a sick member of the tribe. According to Dr. Francis Densmore, Native American medicine men and women would often fast in order to receive a song and a dream or vision that would instruct them on how to treat their patient. The medicine man or woman was also a priest in addition to being a doctor, believing that disease could be caused by human, supernatural, or natural causes. The healer was equipped to treat illness in any of these categories. Medicine men and women believed their primary role was to secure the help of the spirit world, especially the creator or great spirit, for the benefit of the community or an individual. I chose to study the Salish tribe indigenous to western Montana around Flathead Lake and River. Today they form part of the Confederated Salish and Kootenai tribes who live on the 1.3 million acre Flathead Reservation in northwest Montana. American Indian music was always a source of interest for many people, and in 1907, Francis Desmond Moore started to record it. In the Salish world, spirits revealed themselves to people through songs. When someone was gifted with a song from the spirit world, they would keep that song and pass it down through the generations. Women also played a significant role in vocal healing, which is talked about far less than their male counterparts. When we think of shaman, we think of men as traditionally being the healers, but the women had a special role in this type of oral tradition as well. In fact, most Northwest Coast tribes, there seemed to have been more female than male shamans, and they were widely accepted as healers, though sometimes seen as less powerful than their male counterparts. Native Americans believed that sound connects inner feelings to features of the natural environment. So, the shamans used sound as a means to travel through space and time and encounter spirits that help guide them in their ritual. In fact, every shaman's song is personal to them and usually the song will remain the same throughout the shaman's life. Since ancient times, there have been archaeological signs that humans used vibration, tone, and the pitch of human voices to induce altered states of consciousness where one receives connections, healing gestures, and methods. Shamans commonly used drums and rattles or just mimic the sounds of animals, birds, and the elements of nature because they understood that the universe vibrates at certain frequencies and that they could tap into them. They believed that to mimic the sound of the universe is to become the universe and as such have its powers, understanding, and knowledge. Flathead music is mainly vocal in character, the only purely instrumental music being represented by the end-blown flaglet. The melodic line is descending as in plains music, and no harmony is used. Each musical category and each song within each category is an entity in itself, never confused with another song or category. Very few of the songs have texts, rather the majority employ nonsense syllables usually beginning with the consonants H and Y. The vocal quality employed by the singers is fairly typical of the generalized American Indian voice production, using a tight though open throat, but without employing the full resonance possibilities of the upper nasal cavities, a penetrating quality is produced in the style often labeled as the clenched teeth or ventriloquistic. At the same time, this particular voice production is not so pronounced as among many other Indian groups. 
Many researchers feel that Native American music is some of the most complex ever performed. The tensing and releasing of the vocals combined with varying drum beats makes it very intricate in a form of art. Another interesting item of note is that every region of the country where the Native Americans had settled produced greatly varying forms and sounds of music. With so many different tribes, the music produced is always unique to its specific group. <laughs>